Hello boys and girls, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to send HTTP requests in Scala with Aka HTTP in just a few minutes. So this video assumes that you want to send HTTP requests quickly in Scala. And the mindset that I'm going to assume you have is, hey, I just want to pass a payload in the form of a string and you, whatever you are, whatever your server is, just gives me back a string in response as an HTTP response. We're going to use the Aka HTTP client API to do that and we're gonna spend just a little bit of time and uh, very few lines of code to do it. Now, as a recommendation, as with the other videos, I'm going to ask that you write code alongside me, or if you need to send HTTP requests in Scala, just refer back to this video. This video is also in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. Now, speaking of the blog, this is the article associated to the video that you are watching right now. And all of the blog posts at Rock the JVM are created with HTML. But I don't write the HTML. I actually write plain text and I parse that and turn it into HTML with very little code. And uh, the very interesting part is the code with syntax highlighting because I don't do the syntax highlighting myself, but I only pass this code to a REST endpoint, which gives me back the HTML with the syntax highlighting already created. So this is the exact scenario that I'm going to use to demonstrate how we can uh, run HTTP requests to a REST API endpoint. And I'm going to use markup.su slash highlighter slash API, which gives you the description of the REST API that you can use to fetch HTML tags associated to syntax highlighting for your code automatically. So this is what I do for my blog and I'm going to show you how you can do a very similar thing to whatever REST endpoint you have based on HTTP. So I'm here in my development environment where I'm going to create a small object with a main method. This is the object that I've created, Aka HTTP 5 minutes, and I've created a main method in which I'm going to test my code. So in your development environment, if you're following along with me, I recommend you do one of these things yourself. You create one of the Scala applications. Now, the first thing that we need to be able to run HTTP requests is import the Aka HTTP libraries. Now, I'm going to copy and paste this code from the Rock the JVM blog, which I've also attached to the description in this video for your convenience. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to get back to my development environment and I'm going to open the file build.sbt. So this will be the file which contains the description of all the libraries that this project can use. So if you want to create a project in IntelliJ IDEA, you would create an SBT project with Scala. And uh, once you paste this code into your build.sbt, the IntelliJ IDEA will ask you if you want to import changes, meaning that you will allow the development environment to download all the libraries for this project. It will only take a minute so we can get back to the actual code. All right, so after your libraries were downloaded, and uh, you can take some time and pause the video to let the development environment do that, it will only take a minute or something, you can write the following small boilerplate. So Aka HTTP will need an actor system and an actor materializer to run. Actor systems and actor materializers are not something that we, you need to be concerned with. So this is very simple boilerplate. I'm going to say implicit val system equals actor system. You can consider that as some kind of foundation for Aka HTTP to run. I'm also going to define an implicit val materializer as an actor materializer. This is again something that you don't need to be concerned with. This is for Aka actors and this is for Aka streams. If you've heard about Aka HTTP, Aka HTTP is based on Aka Streams, which is a powerful streaming based framework. And we're also going to import system.dispatcher, which is a thread pool in uh, air quotes that we will use to spin up an uh, HTTP request. And I'm going to define my source code which I'm going to pass to the syntax highlighter. So I'm going to define that as a small string and I'm going to write, for example, object, let's call this simple app. And then I'm going to write, for example, val a field equals two. Let's put two spaces here. Let's do a def, a method, 
with x int equals x plus one. And then let's also define a main method with args as an array of string. This will be unit, which is, let's call this print line, a field. Okay, so this is Scala code in a string. So I'm going to pass this string to the syntax highlighter as an HTTP request. So I will create a val, let's call this request, as HTTP request, and make sure you import Akka HTTP Scala DSL model. This is an Akka HTTP type, and this is kind of like a case class. So it's HTTP request, and then you will put in some arguments here. And I'm going to specify the method as HTTP methods dot post, and I will import HTTP methods from the Scala DSL package. Then I will pass in the URI as the string HTTP slash slash markup dot su slash api slash highlighter and then i will need to specify a payload for this request because this is just the http method and the uri we will use post to this uri and then we will need a payload and the payload in http is called an entity and we will create an http entity and we will need to specify the encoding and the content type. So we will say content types dot. And I'm going to import content types by hitting option enter or alt enter on Windows from the Scala DSL package. And I will use content types application slash x www form URL encoded. And I will use this because that's what the markup.su API is asking of me. In practice, you would use application slash JSON probably. And uh, I will pass in my payload. And the payload is just a plain string. So I will use an S interpolated string with the uh, characteristics or the format that is requested by the API. So if you want to create your own request here, you might want to differ from these content types that I'm using. So in practice, you're probably going to use application slash JSON if you want to pass in a JSON payload. And as the string payload, you would pass in the JSON representation of some data that you want to send. In this case, for the markup.su syntax highlighting API, I'm simply going to pass in the source code. So the source equals dollar $source, and then and language equals Scala, and theme equals Sunburst. Sunburst is the theme that I use in the Rock the JVM blog. And this is the HTTP request that I've created based on this source. So this is like a case class. This is just a data structure. Now we will need to instruct Akka HTTP to actually send an actual HTTP request based on this data structure. So I'm going to define a method called send request. Now, before I write this method, I forgot to do something. This source needs to be URL encoded because that's how the API wants it from me. So I'm going to use a Java class. I'm going to say URL encoder dot encode, and I'm going to pass in my source and I'm going to pass in the character encoding. So UTF dash eight, and uh, I will close the expression there. So this is how the markup.su API is requesting the payload from me. So this is application.json in most cases. And this is the actual data you want to send. Okay, now let me get back to send request. I will write the following, I'm going to say val response future. For reasons I'm going to explain shortly, I'm going to use HTTP with uh, open and close parentheses, and uh, I'm going to import Akka HTTP Scala DSL, and I'm going to say HTTP dot single request, and I'm going to pass in my request object that I've created. And this will be the response in the form of a future of another data structure of type HTTP response. I will need to import future from Scala concurrent.
Now, because the type is a future of another data structure, much like HTTP request, this is why I've named this value response future. I think now the name is self-explanatory. Now, because we have a future of HTTP response, we need to unpack this HTTP response into the data that we need. So I'm going to say response future dot map. And from the response, I will extract response dot entity dot to strict. And I'm going to pass in a duration, two point seconds. And uh, for the seconds method attached to the int type, we need to import the right package. I'm going to import Scala concurrent duration everything so that the int type is now enhanced with the seconds method, which will give us back a duration. And uh, response entity to strict returns another future with an entity of this type. So this will be another data structure which contains the actual payload that we want. And I'm going to use flat map here because this to strict method also returns a future. So this will be entity future of type future of HTTP entity. The HTTP entity type is the payload of a response or, or of a request. Now from this entity, I need to extract the actual payload, the actual string that I care about. Now, in order to do that, we will need to have access to the actual HTTP entity type that this to strict method will return, which is of type HTTP entity dot strict which is a subclass of a, the general HTTP entity abstract class. This will give us access to the actual data that this entity contains. So I'm going to return entity future dot map. And I'm going to map this entity, which is a data structure containing the payload to entity dot data as a byte string. So this will be a sequence of bytes and I'm going to convert that to a UTF-8 string, which is a natural string that we work with in our normal programming. So this, in the end, the send request method will be of type future string. So this is the future containing just the payload that we care about. And in main, we can simply call send request, which will return a future containing the actual HTML tags that the server will respond to us. And I'm going to simply say for each print line. I'm pretty sure you're aware of how to work with futures. Otherwise, this code might seem a little too confusing. So don't worry about that. I will get back to the code and break it down line by line. But let's first make sure that it runs. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to run this and I'm going to expect some HTML string at the console. So in a second, need code theme. Okay, so theme equals sunburst. Well, that's because I put an equal sign here. I need to put an ampersand. So uh, let's run this again. And we have some HTML tags from the server. If I inject that into a browser, that will be the code highlighting for the object simple app that I passed here as a string. So our HTTP request was sent successfully. I admit this was a little more than five minutes. It was more like seven or eight minutes, but let's break down the code and make it a little more understandable because Akka HTTP has the reputation for being quite confusing if you dive into it really, really quickly. So let's get back to what we wrote here. We wrote the actor system and actor materializer, which are the foundations of writing Akka HTTP code. Then we created our string, which we would pass later to the HTTP REST API. And for that, we created an HTTP request that we would then later send. And an HTTP request first needs to contain the HTTP method, which we used POST for this particular API. You can also use GET in uh, your own API or any other HTTP methods. All of them are available. So you have POST, GET, CONNECT, OPTIONS, PUT, and so on and so forth. You have them all. You need the URI, which is the URI for the server, and an HTTP entity, which will contain a payload with the content type, meaning the kind of encoding for the payload that you're going to send, and a plain string. And uh, for this particular API, I URL encoded the uh, source code, and I passed in language Scala and theme Sunburst. But this string, in your particular case, can be absolutely anything you like. It can be the JSON representation of some data structure, which we are probably going to show in another video, how to serialize and de deserialize JSON very, very quickly. Now, the crucial 
method is here, send request. And uh, the crux of this method is HTTP dot single request and you pass in the HTTP request. As a response, you get a future of an HTTP response, which you can then later unpack. So you need to process that a little bit further. So you would do a flat map in which you would uh, use the response to extract its entity and convert that to a strict entity, meaning that you pass all the contents of that entity in memory because HTTP entities or HTTP payloads may come in a streaming fashion, may contain more than you have available in your JVM, which can theoretically crash your JVM if you're sending huge files, for example. But in our case, that's not actually uh, unnecessary or important. So we are converting that to a strict entity, which we can then later use to extract its data and convert that to a string, which we can then later use to print to the console. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <music>